Hey there, film fans. I'm Jeff. I'm Dave. And I'm John, and welcome back to The Love of Cinema, a pod in which we'll challenge one another to discuss movies, both new and old, with a strictly positive critical eye. That's right, and to avoid lazy negativity, we have decided to make this here episode a drinking game. Oh no, what will I drink this week? So anytime Ooh. we say anything negative at all about each other, about this film... I had jokes and I had to get, I had to I had to undo the jokes for this part of the section the section here but <laughs> you're going to hear this buzzer this what buzzer means that? we're taking a drink what was that this buzzer <laughs> means we're taking a drink and we hope you drink along with us so pour yourselves a glass as we talk about why camping is once again the fuck off my to-do list cheers <laughs> I'm sorry, I just have to check this. Oh my Your god. Buzzers? What's this run on fucking Microsoft? Oh my god. We got some glitchy it's buzzers not this well. Wait, can I say it's this? Not well. So everybody, this is our deliverance episode. And we have a we have a history of clairvoyance in the random year generator series. So the random year generator spun 1972. And year the, of my the, we, we we decided to do the invasion of the body snatchers. And that week there was an earthquake in New York City and an eclipse. So we get a lot of these kinds of things. We did um a Donald Sutherland movie the week that he unfortunately passed away, RIP. This week, you ready? This is a quote from our movie Deliverance. Machines are going to fail, and then systems are going to fail, and then survival is the game. The week of the Microsoft outage. <laughs> we do an episode with that. And, and that is important because later they say, oh, it's time for us to play the game. It's like, guys, we are clairvoyant. I want to say one more thing to everybody tuning in for Deliverance. We're going to talk about Deliverance. But I've been doing some research since my two co-hosts decided that they, they should, we should start late this week because their lives were really busy and they were just out and about hustling and bustling here oh, in New York City it. and Los Angeles. <laughs> So I've tried to do a little research here, and I've, I found two things about this movie. A lot of people who say it's the best movie ever, and they just talk about the film history, and they sound really hoity-toity. And then a bunch of kids that say it's boring, but they get it. And it's like, fuck everybody. I promise you, listener, we are going to give you an in-depth conversation that is interesting. It is thoughtful. We are not going to use non-words like, that's interesting, or this movie is boring, or I know the subject matter is extreme, but it's not like we've never seen that before. Shut or, the fuck I up. I don't do that when I'm fucking a guy. Like, that's, yeah. God Almighty, oh, Jesus fucking Christ. Here we, we go. We, we, oh the my history. God. <laughs> the, okay, okay, the history. I just, I just have to open this bottle. Of that's all for Dave. Uh, the history matters. We're going to do a little setup of what was going on in 1972, and we are going to talk about this movie. We're going to have fun. We're going to make some jokes, but we will get there. If you need to get to Deliverance, skip ahead. Look at the show notes for your timestamp. We have a little bit to get to before we get there. we got to start drinking gripes, some mini reviews. But please, stay tuned for an interesting conversation. I used the non-word. No, a thoughtful conversation about Deliverance. <laughs> yeah, I'm buzzing that. And we are going to play Thank you for setting that up, Jeff. Now, any of our visual YouTube viewers, Dave drew attention to uh, to something here. Real fast That's before I call out the sponsor, whose beer you're actually drinking, ah. was that Thanos's stones glove? Yes, that is my Thanos okay, power I glove that was, bottle opener. That is your fucking bottle opener. I, I finally found a way, to, a chance to use it. I've switched <laughs> from cans to these wonderful bottles that, that we so picked funny. up. That Jeff picked up this week. Cheers. All right, so this goes out to Carlos. Carlos Barroza, thank you so much. He made Ugh. our show logo a label, and he put them on his homebrewed beer. Jeff, show the label. It's not facing like, the camera. Oh, sorry. You you, you oh, have fuck. you know you've made it when your face is on a beer bottle. That's like, right. And not one that someone's hit you with, but, like, I, I can't actually on a beer to... bottle. Like, and Dave's Australian, just, so you can bet about... that he... Uh... He's been We're talking the about of... our uh, our beer sponsor, Mr. Carlos Barozzo. You can find him at cbarozzo.beer. He finally, with much love and much respect, because I know he's got a life of his fucking own, uh, gave Jeff some beers. Jeff had to drive out to, to the Queens, the Queensland. It, it of, even of wasn't Long on Island him. To... Like, he's had them for quite some time. We just haven't got A lot of traffic. Them. A lot just of traffic. Busy, busy people here. Yeah, yeah. So thank you, Carlos. I, I am drinking in spirit mm. your delicious And the smoky brews. one is good. We want to send them to oh, John, okay. but we'll have drunk them by the time he gets them. So, yeah, I'll just. I'll Carlos just, is I'll a certified beer spirit. sponsor. Carlos, his family's going to Brazil because he's from Brazil. He is going to Toronto, and then he's going to I want to say 
Panama. He's going somewhere fancy to judge two different beer contests because he's a certified Whoa. beer judge. Um, and so he's going to have a hell of a summer. So we what won't see. I'm glad I got these in What is the name of that term? What is the sommelier of beer? Australian. Uh, now, there's a word for it, dude. There is an official word. Are you looking it up, Jeff? Well, I'd yeah. say that our other artist in resident and sponsor is Dasein, D-A-S-E-I-N. They provide all the music on this episode, every single episode. You can find their music available on all the usual music platforms. That's Dasein. Go listen. Enjoy. You're welcome. If you find Carlos, sorry, Doss, I knew the best. Uh, if you find <laughs> Carlos's handle here on Instagram, which is in the show notes, he is a certified Cicerone. Wow, and that's, okay. is, that's that's a cool name. And he is yeah, a BJCP cool. certified beer judge, and he is also a WSET level two, and I believe like he's working his way up third, towards level three. Wow. It's like the third one in the cell block tango, isn't it? God, you guys, if we if we were more legitimate podcast hosts and we weren't just three dudes who like to hang out and see each other Music and talk about movies. You guys are actual filmmakers. Obvious, Don't discredit us. An obvious medium that we should take advantage of is to travel around to beer contests and do some like live shows with some beer drinkers in our audience or, or a guest from one of these beer and Carlos could be there. God, that would be obvious. We're a drinking podcast. Yeah. We have a fucking official Cicero, and Cicero, whatever the fuck I it is. No, and he can, he can give everybody beer while we do this and then pop in every now and then. That'd be so oh, That'd be fun. We could host I mean, we, a fucking screening and pr provide some Carlos beers or whoever's yeah, we take, beers We could there. take Matt and Mark. We'd still only need like three chairs because they'd pass out in the first fucking 30 minutes all right if any of us ever gets rich we should actually do that for like a couple and like over a summer that'd be really fucking fun if or you want to sponsor that listeners please you're listening cloud, sponsor would love that. that yeah that would be also, amazing also i got to shout out this uh event that i left early right before the sausages were served so that i could be here in time for you two to you not be on time what um, a movie to miss out on getting sausage from <laughs> fuck everybody for movies? every single one of you Shout out to Elena and Anna and Phil for hosting. Phil, I wanted your sausage sandwich with Jeff, fucking. He, has, he grows his own tomatoes and peppers. <laughs> Fuck you guys. I'm just and Armando and Keith and Eric, who's doing comedy next week at Pangea. And of course, Angela. They we got some subs, people. We got some subs. Shout out to them. Congrats on one years in the city, Elena. All right. Who the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> what I'm you talking about the people that were trying to feed me before I came oh, here okay. to not okay. start like... recording on time, our deliverance episode. And when I told them we're doing oh. deliverance, they're like, oh, oh. <laughs> I saw that once 30 years ago. And I'm never seeing it again. People and I said, have been I saying that all week. But I also heard some great, great stories and great rumors that I hope are true. I hope are true. I heard in the wow. piggy scene. Today, I heard this tonight, the picky scene, those locals, um, they're local theater guys that uh, Burt Reynolds had done some acting with, uh, and they improvised some of that scene, and apparently uh, the people were not happy about it. Yeah. Because <laughs> Ned yeah. Beatty said, I'm giving you one take, and they're like, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm going to improvise it. Apparently, that was a bad combination. We're going to talk yeah. about deliverance a little bit. Check your show notes. Do you guys have mini reviews? He's like, he's like balls deep in Beatty. It's like, sorry, I kind of went rogue Jesus on that one. Jesus fucking <laughs> Christ. I said we were going to be oh, thoughtful. <laughs> I said we were going to give thoughtful <laughs> feedback and criticism, and I just talked about new subscribers, and now we've just completely blown our legitimacy. But good job drinking that beer. Labels out, Dave. <laughs> so that we could get the video Man. of that. Man. <sighs> I love it Dad, when it just oh falls in your lap. <laughs> I think that one gets to Ugh. play. That stands. Did you guys go see any movies? <laughs> I feel like I did. Oh God! What oh, a week. it's 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 not a it's not a I new saw, movie though. But I'll talk about it at the end. Oh, Dave saw one. Yes, I saw Twisters. Ah! Oh, Dave, are you ready for your first mini review in a couple weeks? Because you've it been is. busy it's working been weekends. While. Yeah. All right, Twisters with Dave. Mini review, spoiler free. You're all, go ahead, Dave. Let it it's, rip. It's hard. It's hard to follow it up because Twister is an absolute classic. Like it's it's mm. one of those ones that you can just put on anytime. It's fun. It's like you know, it's an it's a big blockbuster action film and yeah. they, they brought this one in and they modernized it a little bit like they've changed it around and some people have been a bit detrimental about this i fucking loved it i it was a nice. wild ride nice. it delivered everything the original delivered they made a couple of tweaks and changes the cast are charismatic as fuck i i loved it i thought it was great there's near a dull moment, moment in it. continues yeah. yeah it was it's it good. was 
it's a ride. Go and see it. Like I saw it in IMAX. Oh my fucking God. Yeah. I'm going to see it at least once. Yeah. I feel like it's one of those movies that you're just going to have so much fun watching in a big theater with some people and a fucking surround sound and mm-hmm. Twister, yeah. Twister. I really wanted to go to Lincoln Square. Did you go to 42nd the, the Street, funniest, Dave? Or? Uh, no, I went to Lincoln Square. Oh, I saw it in Lincoln so, you got those, so, you got, so you got your tickets like weeks ago. Uh, no. What? Two days before. It was only a third full. What? I what time did, when did you go early? Tonight. Yeah, it was like yeah. it was like the Thursday midday sort of thing, or two p.m. or something. Oh, the Thursday. Um, and then yeah, the so we Thursday got in real midday. early. Um, John, and no, it was great. it was great. It was funny because like that night I was doing a show, and the show was the two cast members from Twisters. <laughs> so that was, like, was so we just, crazy. We just saw your movie. Wait, what? What? What, what, what show were they doing? He what sent this. They were, he they sent were doing this to a, us. John, they were doing the press tour. Um. So. Oh yeah. Yeah. Josh Horowitz was interviewing them. So, like, I was moonlighting as a sound guy for Happy, Sad, Confused podcast. And, uh, yeah. Wait, are you plugging another podcast? <laughs> it's a big Why one. Why would he do that? He would never do that. C- can, they, can they put us under their umbrella? Yeah. <laughs> Dave just turned the Carlos Broto <laughs> beer label of our show out. Um, can you give us one anecdote from the, the, um, the 92nd Street Y event that you did? Um, no, not really. No. They, they, okay. it was, yeah. I, they, like, I they, were talking got... about, they were talking about a lot about the movie and what happens in the movie. So, oh, I see. It was, yeah. Also, the Twisters just, are heading fucking upstate to. New York. So, what a good time for Twisters to come out. I mean, I'm it, live yeah. on air. I just got my ticket for tonight at the Universal City, the biggest IMAX uh, in the West Coast that Chris Nolan tests all of his films on. Okay, you don't no. have to humble brag. You can just say you're seeing the movie tonight. tonight. It's like totally. No, no, no. Right. But this is, you saw it in the biggest in the East Coast. So I'm going to see it in the biggest in the West Coast. Let's go, dude. Yeah. That's Absolutely. what she said. Just like that, just it's like that grandma at the, at the dinner at the end of Deliverance when she was talking about inches and stuff. And you know it's a penis joke, even though we just 12 saw and a half inches tall. Oh, it was actually only 10, 10 and a half, half inches. inches. Around. That around. cucumber. Yeah. It's like after yeah. this movie, you're going to make that joke, grandma. When it's in your butt, it makes no difference at all. That like if, I wonder if, if was that the inspiration for Rob Reiner's mom in the uh I'll have what she's having scene? Is that grandma? Okay. All right. Dave, thanks for the thanks for the mini review. Yeah, that was a good one. Eddie, everybody go and see it right now. Like Twisters. Mm. Yeah, Listen to this show on your way to see the movie. The movie's so none of us real. have seen uh none of us have seen Long Legs yet, but I keep hearing Long good Legs things, and so I, I, I do, so I do bad, want to but... see it. I might cancel the Twisters ticket and go see Long Legs tonight. I'm seeing one <laughs> of them, you guys. I slept really late today. I'm going to see a late movie tonight. Can you so. see both and with A list and just like give the the people who make the movie your money and fuck AMC? No, I want to see the what what? <laughs> you with that, you could theoretically just say you could book three tickets, right? And they, yeah, you know. I've, I have so have, I tried to look it up once. Do you guys know how much money we actually provide each screening as an A list member? Like, I have no idea. No, I have, I've been I giving AMC find, more I money than that either because I want to make sure, like, I don't want to lose my good deal. I'll go wherever the best deal is because I see a lot of movies like you guys, but I also want, I do want to contribute to, to box office screenings, mm. especially for movies that are really need some of that support not like a twisters i'm happy to go see twisters but we see a lot yeah. of smaller movies too that really need people ass in the seats i would i, I would Im- sure well i would imagine like the back end deals if you're getting a percentage of ticket sales um then you would write that in the second they started doing a fucking a list like the contracts think, would have right? changed in an instant because the studio is yeah, not going to miss think, out on right? that money hey let's cheers it up and I guess, you know, to cheer, I'm just excited the town might be getting back to work. And by the town, I mean all towns in the entertainment industry because the IATSE community chose to ratify. They did yeah, not choose violence. Voting in. Yes, they, did not choose they violence. are moving Cheers. forward. That means for listeners who haven't been listening to us or following the entertainment news, basically all of the major unions are now settled or about to be settled when IATSE mm. actually signs this. And so, moving so now into productions the next three can years. come back to the U.S. Yeah, we need some more productions. Please, back to the U.S. Everyone, God, give us a job. Fucking God, John. Remember we met our uh, idol Daniel Day Lewis after Phantom Thread, and he asked us one question: Do you think young people will like this movie? And we were like, Yeah. Even though deep down inside we were like, Probably not. Well, well, after he said that, I had movie pass at the time. He asked us that. Yeah, he, we were like, <laughs> "Oh my gosh, we love you! Thank you so yeah. much!" And he was like, "Hey, do you think young people will like this movie?" And we were like, 
Damn. Yes. Yeah, see, if, you, if you ask her that now, you'd have to be like, it. hang on, I'll go ask him. Um, I went, I would go with Movie Pass and I would get tickets to Phantom Thread because at the time it was, you could see a movie a day. It wasn't mm. three a week like AMC. And I would just say, I'm going to see Phantom Thread and not go to see it. So I hope they gave him some money for my quote unquote young person. Okay. What I feel year like we don't are we need talking any... about? I feel like we don't... we're talking about 1972. I feel like we don't need, I feel like I've griped about you guys. Um, and I griped about not being able to eat my sausage. And no, 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 no deliverance joke. Snuck them in. Snuck no. them in. No. Are no, you, you stuck to... the gripes in. Thank you. Not the sausage. I'm not. Piggy. <laughs> no, no, piggy joke. No. <laughs> My new friends who I might have recruited to listen to our show, don't they haven't seen the movie. Even, anyway, it's time to set up the year. Let's do it. Are you ready to set this up, Dave? Yes. Your timer yes. says we're 49 seconds in, but I have no idea. Oh, well, that's malfunctioned. Shocker. <laughs> Are you ready? At least you can get flights now. <laughs> Are you <laughs> Are you ready to set up the film year 1972 ahead of our featured conversation about deliverance? Yes. Yes. Okay, <laughs> so we always start with the box office, people. The box office, 1972. Out of all the films that came out in 1972, do either of you think you can guess what was the highest grossing film at the cinemas? John's shaking his head so fucking cocky. Oh, my God, you guys the have video, to see this. The video of my birth, it was gross as shit. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Dave, it is your favorite movie of all of time. All time. <laughs> That is the highest grossing movie, without a doubt. I'm going, I'm going all in. John, you look like the fourth kayaker in the picture that you're in behind you. <laughs> oh, that's not going to end well for you. <laughs> Guys, I wanted to make... Oh, I don't I'll, know, I'll, the I'll odds are one out of four. Yeah. <laughs> it's only... John, John is right, so you get, the, you get the gush. You get the gush alarm. The Oscars playoff. It is The Ooh. Godfather by a lot. Um, according to Box Office Mojo and... The numbers and Wikipedia. I forget who Wikipedia draws from. Mostly men in their basement. Who in case anyone's parents. wondering why John made that joke about being my favorite movie, listen to our Godfather episode. Fuck you, Dave. Yeah, but you ended up liking the Godfather. <laughs> the Godfather Two is so good. That's Fuck still you, my my proverbial buzz of you for the rest of your fucking life, guys. I, I want to interrupt you just really quickly because I listen to um fucking Audible. I listen to these books all the time. Erwin Winkler's book recently. Erwin Winkler was a very famous uh, producer, directed a few movies as well, uh, but he produced the Rocky series, Point Blank, which is a movie I'll mention earlier. What a uh, good later, name. John Borman directed. Um, so many, so many famous movies, a lot of Scorsese films, starting with Raging Bull. Anyway, he at, at one point in his book was just kind of talking about how successful movies like The Godfather and some of these new Hollywood movies were. So he did the, uh, uh, you know, let's adjust for inflation. And he would say like how much money this like Godfather, The Exorcist, Star Wars, Rocky, they were they were, The Exorcist with adjusted made over like three billion dollars today, just because so many more people went to movies back then. So mm. all That's of the movies all they that you did, heard what of, did they do? Yeah, there was no cable. Star Wars made over two, Jaws made over two. If you would adjust for inflation, just because yeah, mm. there were more people going to movies. So I just, it was just interesting to yeah. think about. They're Unfortunately, like like if you adjust yeah. attention spans, it halves again. When was the last time? <laughs> shut up. When was the last time a movie like The Godfather, a drama, made over a billion dollars? Well, I just thought it was interesting because I would say this Joker? year it's a Chris Nolan film. And, oh and, and, no, I th I think Joker. I believe um, Oppenheimer Joker, did not cross a billion. I believe Oppenheimer is at like nine hundred and eighty million dollars. Not worldwide. I thought it went. I no, I think it went I think, I think worldwide. doesn't matter. But I think it's. I think well, either it's way, please you know tell what I'm me. Saying, please like, tell uh, me you need to discuss the gross of this film. <laughs> let's go. Let's keep going. Anyway, I just thought it was interesting to mention. Like we're talking, like oh, Godfather made over a hundred million dollars in nineteen seventy-two, right? Like it made that is quite an accomplishment. It made 
Well, I, I checked a couple sites, and according to some sites, it made over $100 million. Yes. According to Box Office Mojo, it it's at like 111. Wikipedia says 86. I think the numbers is somewhere around 100. Yes. So somewhere, That's somewhere still in the ballpark. fucking anyway. high for the 70s. It's a like, lot. What was the ticket money. price back then? Yeah. Two bucks? I know that. And Jaws only came out you, yes. on. Yeah. <laughs> Jaws only came out on 400 screens. How many, you know, how many screens did The Godfather came out? I feel like there's 400 screens on my block right now that are showing fucking twisters this week. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think back then. So, New York only had seven. Four hundred's like eight a state. <laughs> you know what I mean? For like two dollars. It's not even ten per saying. state. Like insane <laughs> that, to think about. Anyway. I know there's I know we don't need two Dakotas, but like I mean that mm. is that is crazy. Well, Number two you could fit a lot more people in a drive in than the theater because everyone was point. sneaking in the boot. So John you, Oppenheimer, you, again, according multiply that by three because all the people that snuck in in the trunk of the car. For well, sure. Yeah, the for sure. Yeah. And they didn't pay for it. Yeah. Uh, as of right now, Oppenheimer, according to Box Office Mojo, is at nine seventy five. Nine seventy five. Right. Okay. I'll take. We'll round up. Good job. Let's, let's put it back number in two. And get it over there. Yeah, they'll do it. The Poseidon Adventure, twentieth Century Fox, comes in. Nice. Two. Mm. That's a fun movie. Yeah. yeah so they sunk. They sunk a real boat. Uh, the next three films would all be Warner Brothers Pictures. Are you ready? What's up, Doc? Deliverance. No, I, just, I just want to go back for a second. Did they sink in a, a, whole, a real boat intentionally, or was it like a world, water world incident? No, it was intentional. You never heard of the story? They like slowly no. sunk a boat? I'd never heard this. Wow. Okay. I didn't know well, that. Well, now I feel like an asshole that I, I didn't look it up after I said this on the podcast, but I'm like 100% sure. No, just because awesome. I haven't heard doesn't mean it didn't happen. I just haven't heard much about Poseidon Adventure. Well, I know. Gene we, we, we broadcast to the world. All right. Yeah, it was real. Cool. Is that? Fuck wow. everybody. Fuck right. everybody. Go, okay. go look it up, folks. They sunk a real boat. Deliverance. This movie was number <laughs> four at the box office with twenty two point five million dollars on a budget of about a million dollars. So twenty two to one. You want to go ahead and take that to Wall Street? I would. Jeremiah Johnson mm. sneaks in at number five, and to round out the top ten, according to this list that I'm looking at, Cabaret, which would go on to win eight Oscars, including best film editing. Best Director, Best Supporting Actor, All Over the Godfather. Yeah. Cabaret would come in at number six. Deep Throat, The Getaway, Brother of the Wind, and Lady Sings the Blues, which many people think should have won Best Actress over what? Liza Minnelli for Cabaret. Wait, what was, Diana what was, Ross. What was Deep Throat nominated for? No, this is the box office. Oh, what, what, did, it, what, did, it, what did it take? It made $20 million, um, although it's $20 million even, which sounds awfully suspicious. And the, yeah, distributor was, the, the distributor was Bryanston with a Y, which sounds like Brian Cranston put together. So the whole thing sounds <laughs> fake. <laughs> Bryanston, Dave. Dave came <laughs> locked and loaded with her. Uh, Dave was ready to go. He came late. He's got to get up early and he's ready to drink. Uh, Lady Sings the Blues again about, uh, uh, of course, um, Lady Day, Billie Billie Holiday. And it was starred Diana Ross, who apparently campaigned and and people held it against her as if, yeah, um, yeah. Anyway. Mm. Anyway. And now everybody does it. And now everybody's single does it. Okay. So a couple things that stood out this year, apart from that, um, The Godfather would only win three Oscars. Best Picture, Best Leading Actor. And I literally forget the other one. I think it's like lighting or some shit. Um, lighting's not a, a category, so not that. Um, Probably is Gordon Willis. Best lighting. Um, the grips cinematog- there in, his, in his suit jacket and shorts. Yeah, but no, fucking like cinematography <laughs> went to Cabaret. Charlie Chaplin oh, wow. would win an Oscar for best score, which he co-wrote for the movie Limelight, which actually came out 20 years earlier, but was not released in Los Angeles. Until 1972, 20 years after the movie came out, and it technically qualified for the Oscars. So yeah, that's why Charlie Chaplin that. won Don't Best Don't sit on it, guys. Put we did. Film in festivals. And it would have been, it, you know what it would have been if we chose it? Dave, you took category fraud off the fucking buzzer. You took what? it off. Yeah, oh, the only one I have is this. Is is Jeff. I got that one, but I don't know the category fraud one. Anyway, oh. category fraud is what it would be. Just the sing go- it. The Godfather's Nina Rota score nomination was renounced after it was announced publicly because it turns out the love theme from The Godfather was not original. In fact, Nina Rota was hired because they loved the theme and thought it would work so well for The Godfather, like a TV sitcom or something, that they used it. But because that was technically included in the package, 
they said that there is not 100% original score. It has to be a 100% original score submitted to the Oscars. By the way, all of this shit has been cleaned up because, of course, there's like, you you know, we, we've cleaned this shit up over the past couple of years so that Charlie Chaplin would not win that fucking Oscar this year and The Godfather would be fine. They just wouldn't include that particular theme. But don't worry. There was a makeup Oscar for Godfather Part 2, so Nina Rota would go ahead and win her Oscar. Actually, I don't score. think they or would his Oscar because... Score. Johnny Greenwood didn't win for There Will Be Blood because there was one track that was from uh, his original album before that. Johnny so. Greenwood didn't win for There Will Be Blood because there was Bach and because people didn't know that like playing bottles could be part of the score. And all of his shit he did was so interesting. But also Atonement was just your typical classic score. So I actually don't think that's why. It wasn't because they submit the correct material. But what he wrote, they decided that Atonement was a more lush, dramatic score. So that's why Atonement won I thought won he was year. rescinded. I thought they, they took He was not rescinded. Out. He was still technically nominated. Actually, I know he wasn't yeah. nominated at all. He just wasn't even wait, nominated. Wait, wait. I, th I think Are they just stayed away the, from it. Is the love they just theme from... Him. What's the love theme? In, is it... Da, 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 yes, that's considered the love theme. That's from, not original? No. Nope. That wasn't written for The Godfather? Uh-uh. Oh. Uh uh, but you know what? Else? You know what wasn't written for shit. The fucking dirty dancing song was sent on a tape or uh, on a a, a, ta a tape on a cassette. They they literally got it and said, "Sure, we'll use this movie," and it won an Oscar. Okay. So you know what? Fuck the Oscars. I like the Oscars. Okay, other Academy Award things. This is the year that Brando decided <laughs> like to decline his award. People, that's right. Brando did not accept his award, although he's still credited with having two Oscars. Um, Let's see. Some of the shit. Liza Minnelli beat Diana Ross, as I said. Maggie Smith was also nominated this year. This is also the first time that two African-American actors were nominated in the same category. Diana Ross and Cecily Tyson was nominated for Sounder. Eileen Heckert would win for Butterflies Are Free. And then Joel Grey famously won for Cabaret over Al Pacino, Robert Duvall, and James Caan for The Godfather. Um, and that's all I really want to say about the Oscars. A couple tiny... Yeah. I think I had 10 world events. 10 world, tiny world events. But I'm going to start with this little setup. You ready? In 1972, platform shoes, shag carpeting, and Star Wars were all the rage. Star Wars was not the rage. That makes no fucking sense. It was no. really strange. But I swear in my life, this is a copy and paste. Swedish meatballs and black forest cake were all crowd pleasers. And Michael and Jennifer were the two most popular baby names. The year 1972 also had its own unique collection of slang expressions, including at least 10 different ways to say the word cool. Watergate controversy happened this year, June 17th, 1972. <laughs> September 5th, the Munich massacres at the Olympics, Vietnam, sorry, at the Olympics happened, which by the way, it's really, there's some weird shit. Apparently Adidas decided to release a 1972 like retro sneaker from this year. And they hired Bella Hadid to be the spokesperson who's half Palestinian. Little fucked up, little weird stuff going on well, here with the 1972. Yeah, it's a little strange. A little strange. But I'll sidestep that to go on to Vietnam Continues. That's great. Two different space launches. You have the Pioneer 10 space launch was launched into space on March 3rd. And you have the Apollo 17, which would be the last one to go to the moon or so we think. Maybe it was the first one. We'll never know. The Equal Rights Amendment passed this year. And the founding of Atari, 1972. I was born oh. the same year as Atari. The Although, bull... yeah. Yes, you were. That's right. Uh, this was, uh, the, Atari is older than you. June 27th. Only just, and though. The Bloody Sunday incident in Northern Ireland happened on 30 of January, 1972. British forces opened fire on 26 unarmed Irish lads in Derry, Northern Ireland. And with that, let's circle back to some other movies you want to shout out from the year 1972 before we head into Deliverance. We've already talked about A Clockwork Orange and The Godfather. I also want to shout out Conquest of the Planet of the Apes, which you have to read the description. It's a really funny description. And Superfly <laughs> came out this year. Superfly mm. came out this year. Any other ones you want to shout out? You too? No, I think Definitely. we should get into uh, it. We will. I'll just right, shout John, out John three John movies. Ingmar Bergman's Cries and Whispers is a fucking masterpiece, as all of his movies. This movie is the most disturbing, one of the most terrifying movies I've ever seen, without actually being a horror film. Uh, I'll also call it Andrei Tarkovsky's Is that including Solaris. what we're about to talk about? Yeah. Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then the last one I'll call out, because this, this is really fun, uh, a little slightly unknown at the time filmmaker named Martin Scorsese made one of his first features, Boxcar Bertha. Yeah. Um, so that was uh, the beginning of something pretty extreme. Uh, I don't think that was his first, right? I think the, who's that 
No, who? What was his first feature? Do you guys remember? Martin Scorsese. No. I don't know. Box Why would I remember up there, that? though? And then <laughs> Alice was <laughs> Alice is right the same year as Mean Streets. It might it might be Bertha. I'm looking it up really quickly. Hold on, we can all. We saw I'm Enter the. Yeah. We, like saw en- we saw. We saw. We saw Enter the Dragon, right? Because Fists of yes. Fury came out this year, but I think we did Enter the Dragon. We did. Um, Blackula also came out this year, and Sounder. So there's a lot of black exploitation films, and apparently it was sort of torn about like whether or not, um, you know, the the movie should be able to exist without the color of the the skin of the main character being a primary feature, without playing pimps, without playing like the very blatantly black Dracula. But this was a very big time, um, and a lot of very popular movies. So they are, uh, you know, a lot of these movies are yeah, in yeah, National yeah, yeah. Historic Registry. Uh, What's Up, Doc? Played Again, Sam was an early Woody Allen movie. Um, Joe Kidd was an early Clint Eastwood movie. So there's a lot of good stuff that came out this year. This was his technically Frenzy, his third Hitchcock. feature. Ah. Who's that knocking at my door? And then he made a street scenes, a documentary. Sorry, I'll just bitch one. I'll sneak a gripe in as well. This is still a time when people were allowed to have a few goes at that. You know what I mean? You think of everybody says Mean Streets. <laughs> he had made like four four movies before then. Yeah. And thank oh, yeah. God, right? Thank God yeah. he had had time to practice and get better and stuff. You've turned that fucking clock off. That's all, that's all I'm bitching about. <laughs> there's right, also, let's fucking go. There's let's also a movie it. called A Fistful of Dynamite. Okay, you honest. Which was known as Duck, You Sucker. <laughs> yes. Oh, the Sergio Leone? Uh, Yes. <laughs> Yeah, and and yeah. how was how was sucker spelled? Uh, S U C K E R. Oh wow, okay, cool. Starring Rod Seiger as a Mexican. I yep. think he's playing. <laughs> yep. That movie is. There are some amazing elements to that because it's still Sergio Leone, and there are others that just. I for me that movie just never clicked and hit the way his others did, but it's still Sergio Leone. So. All right, All right let's, I, let's do it. I am ready to yeah. get into Deliverance. People, are you ready? This is on Prime as a renter. I'm sure it's on other networks and stuff as well. But I go ahead and wait a day for my packages so that I can build up my $3 rewards for that, that Prime gives you when you put them all in the same box. I give them a fake so address because they're not coming to my free. house anyway. It was in your apartment, and I saw they've, Amazon they've Prime actually, boxes. Yeah, they've actually, they've actually been uh, – oh, that's, that's my wife. They deliver her packages, trust me. They were so nice to her when they got delivered. And as they left, they were like, I wonder if this is your series. It's like, I wonder if they, it's because they were like, it's on your account, although you have different accounts. And they're like, be nice to this apartment. (laughs) Okay. Deliverance, 1972. Mm. Let's just say the cast. I think the cast would be the selling point. Apart from the fact that you've all heard of this movie, you've all heard references about this movie. This cast, John Voight. Who apparently was way nicer before Varsity Blues. I don't know what happened in those like 30 years in between. Burt Reynolds without the mustache. And I'll go ahead and say this. He was smart to grow out the mustache. <laughs> I didn't still recognize him. Still in the arms, though. Still the arms. This is for yeah. This is for him. Bert. We already said him. Ned Beatty, who apparently um had to Ned Beatty? <laughs> okay, Ned Beatty, whatever you fucking is. Asshole. Ned Beatty, who, um. <laughs> I'm enjoying the already had, I, already, buzzer. I already had my beer ready to go. Ned Beatty, who, um, it took a long time before people would stop bothering him about one particular scene in this movie. And a whole lot of locals that, that uh, Burt scene? Reynolds and others knew that, um, this movie's set in Georgia, but I feel like John grew up with some of these people here in North Carolina. This is directed oh, by John Borman. The script is by J- James <laughs> J.D. Dickey. Dan's joke in here somewhere, by the there's way. A, there's <laughs> definitely a hillbilly <laughs> elegy. But, but, Easy now. <laughs> there is a, for sure. Uh, uh, yeah. This is uh, written by James Dickey based on his book. And there's a whole lot of lore, a whole lot of stuff, but we'll get into it. It's about a canoeing trip. And again, I really wanted to make uh, It's the River Wild meets Brokeback Mountain joke, but then when that scene happened, I felt like such an asshole. But yeah, I decided yeah. to still put it consent, on this podcast just tastefully. Is not I, <laughs> tastefully later. The Kahulawasi River. Intense on seeing the Kahulawasi River before it's dammed, D-A-M-M-E-D, and turned into a lake. Outdoor fanatic Lewis Medlock, Burt Reynolds. Takes his friends on a canoeing trip they'll never forget, it's fucking sure, <laughs> into the dangerous American back 
country. Oh my God, isn't that theme just famous? Do they use that in Family Guy? Is it the same exact thing when they do the... Yeah, that piece of music is used... It's been parodied so much. It's been referenced so much. It's any You know any that kid time. wasn't playing the banjo, and that really upset me because I thought the kid was fucking awesome, and he wasn't actually playing the banjo. Fuck. Hmm. All right. This is new for all of us, right? Yes. You are, actually, we should be clear. I, I don't want to lose actually, any clout. I don't think we've ever done this before. Has there ever been a movie that none of us have seen? Yeah, yeah. yeah that was happened. just recently. Yeah. Uh, well, we've seen a, well, we've seen a lot of new movies, but as far as old movies or, or movies from the There's, past. I don't know. They have, they, it has happened. I thought David seen Leviathan. No. David, you seen it? Yeah, I think that ah. was the only one I remember. But I believe you, Dave. It, it mm. doesn't happen often, folks. This is, a, this is fun where none of us I have, have more than a hard drive under my desk. I can look. Maybe. Okay. Everything you've said for the last four years on a hard drive under my desk. <laughs> yeah, but we, we also you know you don't know the that. we also know you don't know the time to go through it. So let's keep yeah, Dave busy. <laughs> let's keep Dave busy. All right. Do either of you want to go canoeing anytime soon, or uh, what? <laughs> I'll go canoeing, but fuck, I'll be paddling fast. I am going with a. Jesus. I'm. I'll maybe go to like a like a lazy river after this movie. <laughs> Just, <laughs> All right. No, I, I think you, you don't want to be slow enough to let them get a good shot on you. New to both of you and, and me, all three of us. Dave, you already did the mini review, so I think I'm going to pass this one off to John. Would you like yeah. to get us started with what did you oh, think? Wow. What did you feel? Feeling Shoot from the hip. First. None of that heady film criticism bullshit. What did you think? What did you feel? Deliverance. Let's do it. The thematic construction of the... <laughs> That's no, you want to go is, thematic um... construction? <laughs> oh, my God. John might beat me on the buzzer count this week. John, you got a drink. <laughs> hey, don't turn that drink light off, Dave. Fuck both of you. Dave, fuck you for that. We have a YouTube. They know that you... Yeah, there you go. Thank you. I, I really... I have had a resistance to seeing this movie for, like, my whole life and... Anyone who listens to this podcast and you guys know that doesn't, there's only one other movie that I feel that way about, and it's Midsommar. I still have not seen it. I don't want to see it. Like, no, there's a part of me that just like, that's different. I, that's I, different. I, I almost, I, I did that one recently. You can, you can hold to that. <laughs> I honestly, everybody's so, there. They, I don't know why. Both but about religion. There, just a, I just don't, there are some things that I just don't want to experience. And like, I almost never say that. So that's two movies out of, Hundreds of thousands of movies. Like, yeah. there's like, for some reason, I've always resisted this one. But you don't I'm glad want to we experience this week. canoeing trip. I was just. We all knew what it happened. I think it's I so. It's so present in the culture. You had not heard about that scene. Really? No, I no, I'd heard about the banjos. Wow, I'm sorry. Okay. I didn't know you didn't know about that scene. You've never okay. had anyone walk up to you and come here, boy, and squeal like a pig. You never heard any of those jokes before, or heard it's just the Ned Beatty okay. stuff. I've definitely, I've definitely heard. Some of the jokes, for sure. Anyway, and I had heard that it is um, a disturbing movie, and it, and it's 1970, so it's so realistic that there's not going to be a heightened cinematic space between you and the story. Like, it feels very realistic, and you're you're there. Um, and it just it lived up to it. I'm glad I watched it. Yes, the scene that we'll eventually talk about is is extremely is extremely disturbing. The inciting incident of this movie, I cannot imagine pitching that to a studio <laughs> i cannot imagine that sentence leaving my mouth and nowadays back then this is the kind of movies that it's were like, starting to be made and greenlit and talked about what's up dave yeah i can no i can just see it like it's it's like hey ned ned come here come here the producers are away this week so just go with me we're gonna try this no fucking way. Yeah, there was like a whole other scene there. Yeah, They're yeah. just going to stick them up for your money. They just stole your wallet. So like, I decided to write in a terrible rape scene instead. Um, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's a... Uh, I want to talk more technically about why I think it's so effective, but more than anything else, it's just, it kept subverting my expectations from, for two big reasons. And I think we'll, we'll talk more after you guys talk as well. But one was just how realistic it was portrayed and technically how they chose to do that, which I thought in terms of cinematography yeah. and storytelling was l really lent itself to why it felt so disturbing and so believable. And it didn't feel like a, Jesus, my dog, didn't feel like a, a horror movie or even a thriller. It felt like a drama. 
And those tend to be the more, those tend to stick with you. I had trouble sleeping last night. Um, and the other thing I'll just say is that. Banjos every uh, time his head went down the pillow. I know, I know, I know. Is that um, this movie for me coming from North Carolina where I was raised, like it's not, you know, the, these heightened crazy ideas of the hillbilly, the redneck, the hills have eyes, you know, it's not really about that. This, interestingly enough, because I think there are themes, sorry to be that asshole, but I think there are themes that are set up. And I was so, so about Ned Beatty's judgment for hillbillies that obviously there's a thematic payoff and deconstruction of that. And it plays into the rest of the story about how they all are assuming things that are not true about the people around them. And that ended up being much more mature and highbrow than I thought it was going to be. I thought this was going to be a, a simple thriller. People are who you think they are, and then there's a thrilling aspect to it, and they're put in a very inconvenient, scary, high-stakes scenario, and they have to deal with it. I think this movie is more than that, and that's why it stood the test of time. I don't know if you guys agree, but that, that really surprised me. Hmm. Dave? I, like I said, I hadn't, I hadn't seen this. I'd, I'd referenced this. Is, remember we used to do that segment, was it really that bad? Where, oh, no, sorry, uh, I should have seen that uh, by now. I yes, really should have seen we, that by now. Where no, it was, was, was where it really it was that a, bad? You were right. No, no, it, it was, I really should have seen that by now, where it was a movie you bluffed your way through talking about. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, yeah. And, but, but you, you put hadn't really actually it. seen. It's just, should have, it's yeah. just should have seen that by now, yeah. 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 Um, well, it was originally called that. But anyway. Um, when Dave thought it up in the shower. Yeah. It was called. Like all my good ideas. And, uh, <laughs> but it was, this is one of those ones. Like I, I've referenced it. I've talked about it as if I've seen the movie, but I've never actually seen the movie. So going in for this, I had like a lot of made up expectations in my head about how this was going to go and where it was going to go. And it's a lot more subtle than I was expecting, to be honest. Um, like yeah. I was expecting some absolutely brutal thing. And it is, there are moments of brutality, but it's, I feel like we've had worse since. Um, so I was left just to like enjoy the story as such, but, and appreciate the cinematography and like that river becomes a character in the film yeah. and things like that. It's, it's like, they, they really, like it starts with what sounds like our podcast talking over scenes of the industry destroying the environment. Like it's just a group of guys sitting around chatting. And it like it like it kind of lets you know as they turn up for the the start of the thing, things might not be okay here, but that's an absolute fucking misdirect. It's like things are fine in that camp. It's when you get up river they get not fine. Like the people that they set up as the ones, oh, this might be threatening, this makes, this is gonna make you feel uncomfortable. None of those really have anything to do with what happens to them. And it's, right. it's a fantastic misdirect. I, I, I dug that. Um, this movie is definitely made to shock. Um, and yeah, I, I will give you that that scene is triggering. And I feel like that scene is necessary. And it, it, it was interesting to see it from um, the perspective of two male characters as such. Um, cause that yeah. like those sort of scenes, like when we watched, uh, the last jewel, oh yeah, no, the last jewel, um, where it's happening, like, uh, like you and I, yeah. Yeah. We're like, they, where Jody Comer is being sexually Jody assaulted. Jodie Comer was so fucking good in that movie, But they, they held on her face and they, it was a similar technique with Beatty in this one. Um, and it was like that really, I, I was like those, that filmmaking technique really kind of spoke to me. Um, yeah. I was curious that Burt Reynolds supposedly fired his agent for Boogie Nights, but this was okay. Yeah, <laughs> like, <laughs> honestly, yeah. I also heard um, that Jack Nicholson really wanted to be in this movie, but he had already done Easy Rider and Five Easy Pieces, and so he asked for a half a million dollars, and they said, we only have a, whole, a million dollars, that's half the budget. And he basically said, well, I'm going to be in the movie, so get more. And they said no. Wow. Hmm. The th but I think the thing I like the most is it serves up the creep and the foreboding at the beginning and then makes you forget it until it's yeah. too late. It's like, oh, we're just, you know, four guys mm. on a river now. It's a camping trip and we're, you know, we're doing the male bonding thing and whatever. And then all, it just goes sideways in the blink of an eye. So, yeah, I, I mean, yeah. I enjoyed the first half of this. I'll talk about the second half later. Jeff? So I'm mixed at this point. I 
I said what I said it before, and I, I do feel like, I you know, when, when you start a movie that you know is an older movie, you don't need to know the history. You don't need to know the context. And even our history and context doesn't mean we know everything that happens. But this was meant to be done in the cinema. And so to have the landscapes, to have the canoeing trip, to have the chill, this is even before, mm. because there's like men bathing and stuff. This is before fucking um, a room with a view where they showed like, naked men bathing together and it was fine like i can't even imagine going and seeing this movie this is this is probably the first of a lot it's probably dave how much would it be to get you to to do cinematography on a on a river oh no i'd jump white water i would jump at that chance how much would the insurance company bill you for to like insure you well they're not billing me (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> and so so you watch this and it's stunning and of course a lot of our movies open with landscapes and even just like the there's like 10 minutes of adr at the beginning of this where we just see landscapes and it's like well they want to go on a canoeing trip and that's their right they're trying to get away from their families i bet you so many people related to this for so many different reasons and john you said inciting incident which is exactly what it is at the same time it's also more of like a psycho or do the right thing inciting incident where it's basically like Usually the inciting incident happens a half an hour before this one is. This is almost mm. like a redirect. This is like, mm. to me, the inciting incident would have been like when they got on the water or like, I, I don't even know. I, I mean, of course, that's the inciting incident. But the fact that it happens so late, in the, not late, but like it happens a while in, you know, decent amount of time. It's like, oh, but that's what it means is that's not what the movie's about. And I think that the, the, the reason this movie is so good is even if you think it's boring, like let's say, let's just take the scene and, and not to spoil too much, after the scene, they dig with their bare hands to bury a body and then they run to get the fuck away from there and then they get back on the canoes and they go back on the river. This is 20 years before Goodfellas. So we don't know what it's like to bury a body. We don't have murder. Mm. We don't have those kinds of things, you know, if you think about the context. But even if you did, even even if you sat there and said, well, I know what it's like to bury a body, they did it so honestly, you know, they did it so truthfully, like even letting them, the guy go, the other guy, again, not to spoil too much, the way that they let him go. I mean, it's 50 which, years course, old, we're back. good. Yeah, but the, but the way they let him go was honest. You have the one guy run after him and be like, I can't leave my friend. I can't chase after him. Like, you know, you, like they, every single thing was cared for, but they also filmed it in a way that wasn't, spoon fed to the audience it wasn't showing the audience it was just what would it be like and i feel like those kinds of movies were like the mean streets and all the other movies that we talk more about really those are just the emblematic examples of this era but deliverance did this like it's just what would it actually be like in, if this really happened and i feel like they did and that. they pulled it off you said you used the word emblematic i kept thinking sorry for the terrible play on words here but how emblem Matic, if you will, it is that like the the idea of regular people underneath these cir- under these circumstances. Yeah. That that's why and, and just not filming it with any with any heightened device to it. There was yeah. no mm. there was there, it never turns into a thriller. For for me, I didn't think it did. I, I felt like it stayed in the space of drama. I don't think it played into genre. Um, well, I felt like they never filmed it with those moments that you see in thrillers, which is basically like, here I am, I'm going to be a murderer. It's kind of like, oh, fuck, I got to use this bow and arrow now. I got to be the person or, oh my God, I got to get on this canoe. It was never like, I become the hero moment. You know what I mean? It was never that. Yes. Mm. There's a difference. Yes. I'm going to, I'm going to just turn the spoiler alert on right now because Good. I feel like we're just going to get right into this. And like, I know it's a 50 year old yeah. movie and we shouldn't be able to spoil it, but if someone does want to go on way and watch it without us talking about the None stuff of us they're about to see. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. But, and so, and yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll segue in again that the lead up to this movie with their, them being cocky and thinking they're better than the rest of everybody and thinking they can just throw money at them, actually believing that that boy didn't know what a telephone was um, and setting it up like they were going to be the bad people because they know that they're out and about because that's so easy for a murder mystery where it's like these people know they're going to be on the river by themselves and they have their cars. So it's like they're probably going to mm. be the guilty ones. It's like that's. What the movie's about, the deliverance is obviously biblical. There's obviously religious elements to this, retribution. Do they? What do they deserve? Did they do this right? Should they trust the law? What would God do? I feel like those kinds of things, even though, you know, it's like maybe that would actually bog the movie down a little bit. I actually think that's kind of what it's about. I think they want us to wrestle with the conundrum, the moral conundrum 
of this more than the incident itself. And I think they they were successful in that. If I for were to sure. go back and watch, I would go back to watch for how they laid that, for how they planted those yeah. seeds as opposed well, to the Especially incident. when it turns out that, like, again, there's a second misdirect in this film. Um, from what I can correct me if I'm wrong. It keeps going. In a yeah, good like way. when like, they when oh they God. get to the point with the uh, the hunter, um, after the like when, um, Lewis has, like, broken his leg. I have an extra question about why is Lewis made of raw chicken, but apart from that, um, <laughs> the hunter, because it's like it's, it's fucking poking out. There's like chicken bones poking out of his leg. I'm like, dude, that is fucking chicken bones. Yeah, we saw like, a lot of brutalized yeah. bodies, <laughs> but. Yeah. Uh, like the hunter incident when he climbs up and it, like there's a guy up there he just shot our friend there's a whole 6 minute scene about and about he was shot he was shot he was shot and they go up and he hits the guy with an arrow and then it turns out the friend wasn't shot so that guy Maybe didn't the hunter actually was do the anything right guy. yeah that but, guy but, didn't but actually it... do anything they thought the guy was shot but I'm pretty sure he was just killing himself because he couldn't deal with he, what he had happened. I think he was killing himself. Yeah. Do you yeah. think? Do you think he was? Or maybe he just was like. I think he was killing himself. Or even if he wasn't killing himself, he was just like, I need out of this situation. He, yeah, I he need threw to himself just... into the rapids, dude. He's fucking killing himself. Like the look of him when they find him, and so and they're like, he wasn't shot, and you're like, oh fuck, they just killed a guy for nothing. I would definitely do something different to kill myself than just go into rapids. But like he, yeah. he just he was like, I need to get out of this canoe and and I might die, and I think I need to do that for sure. And Ned Beatty saying, "Oh God, there's no end to it," is like one of the most that like, was ridiculous. that was a good line. It's also not even is uh, the Jeff. You're saying that like they are setting them up so that you think these people are going to be bad people. What I love about this, and this is like straight up fucking seventies, is that um, it subverts it in two different ways they are those people and they aren't those people exactly nothing exactly. is clean people so are these labels. people these people are killers yeah. too and they don't know anything you exactly know? and they are and they aren't okay with it like there's nobody is is one thing and when you put these human beings into like these heightened scenarios um you know you just see you just see humanity <laughs> you just see it like fucking get slowly slowly through john voight who becomes our lead i think it's not yeah. super clear when you start the movie but as the fallout happens the aftermath affects him the most ironically and i would love to know if this was on the page or if this had something to do with ned Beatty and what the actor was hoping that the character would be able to do but after his sexual assault he does not experience the same fallout it's almost like there's a it, it's, it is binary and clear for him because there's a sense of vengeance or a sense of justice uh, that he is looking for that is not as philosophical and ethical in, in terms yeah. of the question that the rest of the guys are put to. I feel like, they yeah, because they, they, they killed his rapist and then he just disassociated from the whole fucking thing. Yeah, he was like, who fucking cares? You know, and, yeah. I mean, look. Yeah. All right, let's, let's not shy away from it either. I want to talk about and that scene is a good place to start, unfortunately. But we can point to a lot of parts of this movie. Why I think one reason it stays away from genre so much. Um, anyone who is into filmmaking probably thinks about this. But listeners, if you just love movies and you've never really thought about it, there are a lot of ways that we film certain genres. There are certain techniques we use in certain moments, in certain sequences, in certain points of each script of certain genres. And I think one reason why this movie was so effective to me is because it stayed wide in moments that a lower bar film would have gone into extreme close-ups. So mm. there are a lot of moments, and I think that rape scene is a fantastic one. Yeah. Jeff, you alluded to it. I'm not surprised to hear it. I did not read the anecdote, but I was not, I'm not surprised if Ned Beatty said, I'm only doing this once. Like, That's, we're, yeah. I, I have one real good take in me, and I, it's just too it's just too hard. It's too intense. I don't want to do that again. So they shot a lot of that in this brilliantly staged pan of this just this fucking camera on sticks, mm. and that was the wide shot. They also went back though to establishing our our surrogate character, certainly in that scene, John Voight, who's tied up to a tree, who has to just bear witness to his friend's assault. They almost never went in super tight to make it 
super psychological, so that we could stay safe inside of John Voigt's conflict. They stayed fairly wide on him too. Even his isolated mm. shots, I would still say they were like mediums, maybe medium close-ups. They went, they went but they were and never baby, extreme. They did for the very for yeah. the for the actual penetration. Sorry yeah. to get too yeah. specific, but up until that moment, what was so exhausting to watch and so defiling was the lead up to it for me. Yeah, it was not the it's it's the watching him get tired, the guy starting to fuck with him, the fact that they had no agency and it lingered in the in the place where they took away their agency. He's tied to a tree. He's fucking naked in his underwear, running around, exhausted mm. physically. And they're just fucking with him with no help in sight. And it doesn't go straight to... They could have cut away from that. We would have known what would have happened. You could have cut away and cut back and had Ned, Ned Beatty pulling his underwear up and crying or something, but they didn't. And I think that kind of language mm. stays true through the rest of the film. All the way into... Jeff, you, I'm, I'm glad you alluded to it, because do you guys remember... When we were talking about Psycho, how blown away I was at the cover-up sequence. Like, how he shows mm -hmm. you every inch. The most of that, the center of that movie is, like, him covering up a murder. The whole decision-making process after they kill the rapist and decide, are we going to kill, are we going to bury him? Yeah, let's bury him. The whole sequence that goes through the end of the burial, I feel like, is actually what this movie this is the this is the the apex. Everything is going to come down from this. Psychologically, you see everybody start to handle it differently. Burt yeah. Reynolds is convinced what we did was right, and I'm going to justify it as much as I can. Yes, our friend was shot. Of course he was shot. We need to defend ourselves, even though he's in this vulnerable place and his leg is broken. John Voight is doing whatever it takes to maintain some kind of continuity at the at sacrificing mm. his own psychology. And Ned Beatty is no, you're, you know, you're right. There were absolutely four very independent character-driven decision-making processes. I did find myself getting impatient with some of those discussions, though. Um, but I think that might have yeah. just been my frame of mind when I was watching it because I, I was feeling a bit rushed. Um, yeah. Because sometimes it Yeah, worked. wasn't there a piece of you that was like, cut, for yeah. the love of God, cut, yeah. cut to the future, please, yeah. like, God, move yeah. forward. Okay, so I was yeah, meant yeah, to feel yeah, like yeah. that. Great. But Okay, cool. Because mm -hmm. I, think I know thing... like it, it really worked for me in the dinner scene at the end. When, like, they're oh. out and they're just sitting there and you're waiting for a reaction for one of them. You're waiting for someone to break and they just take so long to and get to the point. And not just the dick size joke. You know and what I mean? Yeah. It's like, not, like, give us... <laughs> that's what we got. To, it's like, yeah. oh, no. It's like, Jeez, John uh, Boyd's crying. This is awkward. And then do it's you, like, yeah, it's like do oh, you feel, Grandma's going to make a dick yeah. joke to make it okay. Do you feel like eating? Yeah, okay, here's some corn. The least nutritious fucking vegetable I could hand you right you're, now, but I think I think you're both you're this both. This corn is magic, right? Is that what he says? <laughs> yeah, this corn yeah. is magic, isn't it? You're both you're both spot on about the discussion. Yes, Dave, it definitely lingered, and yes, John, um, they all had their reasons for what they wanted, but they also all had so much to lose. So, for instance, I actually kind of appreciated that Burt Reynolds was like, "I'm a supporting character, so I'm going to play one beat this whole movie." Not really, but close. And I love that they had the he wants to be Tarzan, right? And they're like, kind of. He he knows the woods, but he doesn't feel them. He's not really, you know what I mean? He's not Bear Grylls. Hmm. Uh, he did kill somebody. And so he's sitting there, he's asking everybody all this. He's like, do you, what about this? What about this? The law, the this. And it's like, well, he actually killed somebody. So they might actually accuse him of that. You know, they, like he actually yeah. has that to lose. You have Ned Beatty who that happened, but back in 1972 and the men, like probably very, they'll have to tell the truth if it comes out, which of course, oh my God, does that come to play or what? Do we really, is Ned Beatty really going to try to defend everything? He's going to be grilled about what led up to this. Like, do we want that? And then you have um, John Voight, you were there. Did you witness this? And he, he, you're right, John, with this moral conundrum, but at the same time, he also, he needs to be the storyteller because he's the only one that was, he played, he has both sides because the other two guys came in on the canoe. And then the only other guy who essentially has the least to, to lose, he has the, the least to lose. He didn't kill anybody. He wasn't sexually assaulted. He didn't witness a sexual assault. He kind of barely witnessed the murder or the, 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 the self-defense of the arrow, yeah. which by the way is fucking awesome. All the arrow stuff was great. Yeah. He kills himself because he can't handle the conundrum because he yeah. is the one, of course, who is like, let's just tell the police because he has the least to lose. So I think that, yes, the, the movie comes down to that 20 mm, minutes of this, but it's like at the same time, that the 
point of the movie and the reason that I send you this like Christian podcast because it was like deliverance questions at revisited or whatever. Like it's like, of course, like the Christians are really coming up, you know, talking about this movie. Of course, he's sitting there. He's like, let's tell the law. Because what, what, what does it matter to him? What, what was their problem? Was it like the, the character in that scene was way too old? No, I didn't listen to it. But, but the whole idea is who gets to decide, the law or the almighty? That's what... Yeah, I was coming for you. <laughs> who gets to decide, the law or the almighty? That's what that's his whole... Jeff, no, no, the no, deliverance is definitely too. a million... Deliverance, deliver us from evil, right? Like deliverance is so rooted in the Bible. And that's the title they chose. No, mm. you're right, dude. I said it was the the apex, but I think I think there's actually a really strong argument that it is what I initially said, which is like an, a very late in the game inciting incident, because the story it's more and more interesting and much more complicated in terms of their humanity and characters as you see them beginning to justify something that is never going to give them deliverance, evil, like which is in perpetuating evil. Why on earth would they have listened to Lewis when he's in screaming in shock that he was shot, that the other guy was shot? Danny was shot. I think it was Dan or whatever his name was, was shot. And Everybody yeah, was screaming just, he was shot. It was like, I think it was that, that went on for so long. True. But no, but I mean, it was it. It was, that baby was like, Lewis says he was shot. Like, the, God, the, again, the lingering, how long it took yeah. for them to play that sequence out for before you have this really strangely shot almost day for night uh sequence where oh on top of the where, mountain uh, john void climbs the mountain which yeah, they, was like they tried to do day for nine montage. post right yeah it didn't it was weird it, you know whatever technology, it, it looks technology like when you, it, it looked like when you badly like do a fucking photoshop composite yeah yeah it's so like, but it's you're got right rings that, around that, it, is guys. The, <laughs> that is the interesting thing story-wise for sure Again, if you were imagine explaining this story to someone or pitching this story to someone, these guys want one thing, and then it goes so wrong beyond their hor- you know worst imagination possible. But the actual story is what is going to be how they begin to justify this terrible thing they do. Right. Not because not because the thing itself justified that stuff. Mm. They are going to work to justify it for the rest of the movie, and therefore, will never ever seek that deliverance but, it, but it there's still a piece of me that goes back to ned Beatty and wonders i think he might be sleeping fine by the end of this yeah his guy's based dead based on You're what right. they did You're right. not, yeah. not what, what would happen to him he has his own trauma for what happened to him he got his but vengeance I think his deliverance is but relative I, to yeah to i love it right right not, not until they find the body um and they're like there's no bullet hole like there's no bullets there, there was nothing that was a rock and then yeah. the the cops are like, oh, this guy's brother went up hunting and we haven't heard from him since. And you realize that, yeah, they just fucking killed a guy in cold blood because they thought he was shooting at them. Yes. Well, and then rather than tell the truth, their lies actually got like, them caught. Like, then everyone, you know? everyone's fine with killing the other guy in the woods. He fucking had it coming, but then suddenly they've killed a completely innocent person. And you know what's cool? You know what's cool, and too? And that's a real that... late in the game change, like like the yeah. really late in the game development. It's, it's cool, yeah. too, that because... There was still ultimately nothing to pin them on. So they're going to get away with it. Hmm. But they know that all, everybody involved <laughs> is suspicious of them. Yeah. And that's so when the metaphors start. They have, to, they have to live with that for the rest of their life. Dude, that, think, all the way to the end, too, with the, the casting of the deputy, not the sheriff, but the deputy who was like real thick, southern, rednecky accent. Sheriff, you better keep him here. I know these boys are up to no good. You know that guy who's, and it's his brother-in-law who was hunting, who was the yep. hunter? Yeah. Just the casting and the idea of making sure that, like, as soon as he opened his mouth, if not just from the look, as soon as he opened his mouth, you were thinking, oh, fuck. Remember when Burt Reynolds said, I'm not coming back up here to sit in front of a jury with all these motherfuckers, cousins, aunts, and uncles. Yeah. yeah. Right? You know, like, you immediately think, like, oh, my God. Like, there's no way he doesn't know those people or, mm. and you're immediately, as if you're, I don't know if you guys, but I immediately thought the actual guy who was with the rapist knows this dude. So I was, I was, I was two jumps mm. ahead. Like, you know, in ther- I mean, that's I an even, unresolved thread pretty much. Yeah. Which, which is, is so wonderful. It's yeah. Great. yeah. Like, it's just like their morality and their ethics. So in storylines are totally unresolved, which is because nothing is ever going to be delivered. Yeah, here. no. There is no absolute closure. I, I will. Um, there's a couple of things that made me um, like pique my interest. It was like there was when they're sitting there just before all hell broke loose. 
Um, and he's like, yeah, no matter what's going on in the world, no one can find us up here. And I was like, wow, that is like the 70s equivalent of I'll be right back in a horror movie. Ah. Like, yeah, and the no, one, and the no, 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 and no trouble can find us. No matter what's going on in the world, yeah. no trouble can find us. And trouble is right around the corner, buddy. And the locals say, don't go on that river. And yeah. they say, we're going to go on that river. <laughs> yeah. And also, I forgot how long it takes people to die in the 70s. It was a long death, wasn't it? Or both of them, like a few I of them. I just can't get all over the, all the arrows things. Guys, performance-wise and patience of storytelling, I cannot get over, and I'm sorry to keep going back to that scene. There, there'll be other moments that I can point to for sure, but from, the, from your line that you just said, Jeff, uh, Dave, does he say that to Burt Reynolds or they, does... It's the group. Do, do Ned Beatty... Is it? I thought it was just two of them who said that to each other. Oh, they might have. I, I, yeah, I can't remember exactly. Like the, can't I can't remember either. It was still the campfire. That feeling, that threading that needle in the first part of the scene where the two mountaineer rednecks come to Ned Beatty and John Voigt, mm. not overplaying and overselling that something that threatening was even potential. Yeah. That is the fucking bullseye. Yeah. It is so uncomfortable as you see them realize we're losing control here. Yeah. yeah. And we can't, we can't fix it, this it, problem. It's the movie and equivalent never... to being mugged on the street by three guys when you realize that you but don't way, have a chance of getting out of this. It is so, not yeah. fast. It is not super quick. It is not yeah. super quick. It is not fast. It is not super quick. And that you did, oh, I didn't even see it coming. And, and this terrible thing was happening to me. Yeah. It was the burn. And, What's so, not to, to raise the stakes on it, what I think is so incredible is that I'm still not sure, because I don't think the Mountaineers thought they were going to do that when they mm. first saw them. I knew they thought, I think I'm pretty sure that they were going to fuck with them somehow, if not yeah. hurt them physically or do something messed up to them. I don't know if they were literally like, we're fucking raping the next guys we see on this river, but they saw these two city kids and they just, they just, the amount of control that they gave to especially the main guy when he touched i think the most unsettling moment for me in the whole movie is when he touches ned Beatty's face when they're still just talking to each other mm. when the four of them are down by the river and you see him just like immediately cross the line yep and it's it's not immediately it's a few minutes into yeah that but scene, still but it's that's, that's a moment like, where you're like oh oh my god and this other man has a rifle and then right after that he raises it and you realize like anything is possible now this movie can turn into anything it wants to be and i just have so much respect for john borman that he just did not abandon that style and it felt so that's why it's so disturbing and that's why it's I, so real the reason i was so mixed on this is because some of the things did take their time to develop and stuff like that but now that we've talked about it i'm actually like this was great this was exactly as intended and it was just my yeah my mind being a little yeah. too rushed when i watched it so if, yeah if you're gonna sit down and watch this like... take your time and he did their Don't own guys... stunts because they didn't have they Fuck, couldn't afford yeah they stunt did team. yeah they, they couldn't no vfx could, uh, no stunties what was the what was the insurance policy on those? That's what I'm actors? saying. Because some of those dives into the water, it's like, okay, they dove into some water. I don't think they introduced anywhere, insurance but they did it until pretty the close 80s. close to some rapids. There were some rapids putting pretty an actor, close by. Put, fuck the, you gave it to the rapids. Putting an actor in a boat mm. today without a stunt person, like in the same shot, that is yeah. like, that was, those are A-list actors. There are two A-list actors in that boat. Especially, one, like, probably I'm pretty unknown sure, I, think and they, one I think they used to study when... Um, Reynolds was flicked out of the canoe. I think that was a stunt shot. That may um, have been the only one. <laughs> yeah. But again, I mean, yeah. Because didn't Maybe he went on? Guy, the well, actually, he, he had a bit of a history of stunts as well, I think. Because he, didn't he do Hooper as well? Dude, he was like the number one box office star in the world. Yeah. Like from like a few years before this to like eight years after oh, this. Oh, I know. Like, as a kid, I got I taken love... to see all the Smokey and the Bandit films. Yeah, dude. I love that he chose to take a role where he goes from strong man to the weakest man. Yeah. I mean, like that, that was, and he played it well. I, mm. I believed it. Like yeah. he was useless Yo, for his, the last half of the film. His femur was broken for like a hundred miles of river rapids and about two yeah. full days. <laughs> and Angela, yeah, I mean, the, the, the fascia that I would think, come out with the femur. They did a good job. It's pretty accurate. His yeah. is more, his story, nothing I think like is chicken more, skin. his arc, I think is more, <laughs> Aristotelian, if you will, like more Greek tragedy, like the man who said 
we should do this 100%, the instigator, the, mm. the full faith believer ends up potentially losing his leg because he played the game. Like, yes, he barely survived, but not, not because of himself. Yeah. His friends had to help him survive. So I, yeah. thought, I feel like We've his arc one is actually friends. even more straightforward. It was, abs- oh no, it was remarkable. Um, Do not say it's me, you guys. <laughs> there was something else. No, fuck you. There was something else that I wanted to ask you guys about specifically in the, in the latter half. Oh, oh my God. Right at the end, when I didn't think I was going to be any more disturbed, and I felt like they were wrapping it up. That close-up of the sheriff at the car, mm. the shot terrified me. Like, him, they had not shot, they had not had a moment like that in so long with any yep. kind of close-up. That when he got in his face oh, yeah, that, and yeah, he said some really great questions, don't you, and don't, any, with basically, don't you ever come back here again. I, like, oh, so we good. have a hunch, it's so but good. don't ever come back here again. It's so that good. was so scary. I had trouble sleeping last night. <laughs> this was, this was, this was <laughs> so a good, very man. effective film. Yeah. It's everything where the crowd adds. I know, saying, I know it. Which wishes it was. Yeah. Uh, one also, hour, there was a, ch- one also, hour... there was a church on wheels. Come on, yeah, fair, that was, was, yes. we'll, we'll get that we'll get moving yeah. as soon as the church gets out of the way and the church is on the wheels. bells ringing. Yeah, yes, I, and the, I, meta- I, I the missed... metaphors of that, the metaphors yeah. of that. We'll get moving again as soon as the church gets out of the way. Mm. In a movie no called fucking metaphor there. Yeah, <laughs> deliver like us from evil for or that. You know what I mean? It's like God damn it. These are my favorite, favorite, and you guys know. Just, you know, you know, the f- films I'm interested in and kind of some of the stuff I've made, like putting humans under ethical quandary and moral quandary, I think, are, are my absolute favorite stories. What would you do? Questions. And yeah, we're not going to exactly, play this game exactly. on air so we all don't get fucking arrested. But of course, Elizabeth and I looked at each other and we were like, what would you do? Well, I say, and that's, you I say know, this what the fuck th- would you do in that scenario? I say this all the time. So, what is an actor? Ask 10 people, you get 10 different answers. There's 100 people, you'll get 99 different answers. But one thing for true is when somebody says, oh, I can't even imagine, that's your job is to imagine. <laughs> you yeah. cannot say that. You can't say it. It's like, what would happen if you were camping and this happened? It's like, you can't say, oh, I can't imagine. Nope. That's literally your job yeah. is to you imagine You have to make that. a choice. And bring it to, yeah. I did have a, a one hour and 20 minute thought where they're like, they've got him in the canoe and, they're, and I'm like, you know, I'm starting to think their cars might not be there. You're right. Because it was yeah. like certainly set up at the beginning. Why were Those they still guys waiting were still, for them? still a bit, a little bit Those under kids suspicion. Were, they were never but ready to go. Again, something that subverts your expectations. They turn up. The cars exactly. are there. They've done exactly, exactly. what they said they were going to do. Yeah. And you know someone's there waiting for them. The kid speaks. <laughs> That's subverted my expectations. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah. Dave, so, yeah Dave, just... Dave, you're right, dude. The fact that those cars were there, it just never... It, uh, I'm sure all this shit is in the novel. Like, I haven't, I haven't read it. I'm sure mm. a lot of these wonderful, everything we're saying, these misdirects and these subverts, subvertation, whatever the fucking word yeah. would be. I'm sure a lot of it is there in the story. Um, but just to have the, the fearlessness to try to portray that realistically, I thought was so incredibly mm. bold and compelling. Yeah, totally. And I just don't know. I, I, I fucking ring this bell in every episode, but I just don't know what we would do with this kind of material today. I think it would have turned into the Hills Have Eyes. I think it mm. would have. T- I well, think I mean, it would have felt way more heightened. I feel. Like, I feel like we've overdone. seen what happens when they try to make this a modern day, and we ended up with The River Wild, which is a great film mm. and very suspenseful and but it's does wonderful river. things. But it's it's not this. This is something else. I know they say this the river is crazy doing... and it's dangerous and you, it doesn't go anywhere and you're going to get lost. Yeah, I feel, it's I not feel like about the yeah, river. The level it's of intensity they took of... this to is yeah. stuff you only see in horror thrillers now. Which is, but again, let's be specific because there's a restraint to the filmmaking in this. The language, yeah. the cinematography, everything, the editing, everything that went into it is why it doesn't feel safe. Sometimes even in the scariest horror movies that come out nowadays, you kind of can get into the cocoon of the filmmaking. That's I, the only way I know I'm able the to formula see them. of jump scare. <laughs> <laughs> you know the formula of the jump scares, the exposition, the, re- the you know. <laughs> the, I never felt that way about this. I was never quite sure. I never felt safe other than yeah. I knew I was in the hands of a good director. I never felt safe defined in terms of def- definitions by genre and style. And I feel like that is, um, even, even t- to raise the stakes on it, a couple of years later, one year later, right? 
The Exorcist comes out, which I think took mm. a very similar approach. Yeah, There's something so restrained and realistic about it that you're like, I don't know what to rely on to make, where's the cut? Where's the next thing that can give me a moment of reprieve? It never, they yeah. never come. That's Once it starts, it certainly doesn't. Real. Yeah. And that people still, it might, mm. might, might be. <laughs> I'm not convinced. Anyway, this All was right. a, my yeah. takeaway from this was, I was, Elizabeth and I were like, I mean, our jaws were kind of open. The, we were not looking forward to watching it. Yeah. But I, and I yeah. did not sleep well last night. I could not stop kind I mean, of dreaming the one, and thinking about yeah. this movie, but I'm glad I watched it. It Once again, it like gave me a bar. Like I have yeah. got to try to make okay, movies that's, like this. That's a bad choice this of words. This is the but... shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. Um, I, I'm with you. I watched it today and um, I, yeah, it's. That's, it's this wasn't stay, your it's inaugural s- screening room <laughs> movie, was it? Was no, this no, the no, first? no, no. We couldn't get okay. that. So we couldn't figure that. Yeah. We're yeah, still, they probably heard what you're right. fucking watching. They're like, no, no, you're not. No. I will say uh, <laughs> that yeah, doorman would have sat down. I can only imagine. <laughs> Great flick. I can only imagine. I can only imagine like hearing the door open while this is on and be like, just pause, pause. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> all right. And it's paused on Ned Beatty. Right? Like, <laughs> oh my <laughs> yeah. god. Um, also, Ugh. what are the odds that a lot of these people would go on to play like politicians after this movie? It's like, we need to wear suits from now on. <laughs> you know what I was uh, thinking? Like, just for being Ned Beatty, a fan of fucking Ned Beatty. Yeah. You guys know one of my favorite movies, Network. We've talked about yeah, it on this yeah, show. Yeah, we talked the about The fact it too. that he got to go from so many, a man who had all of his power taken away from him. Exactly. To the most powerful man in the in the world, maybe the, you have yeah. defied the laws of nature, you know, the head of the CIA. I feel like CIA he was allowed, like, he was allowed his, he was his retribution where people probably knew he was still being, and they were like, you did a service to the film. Like you shouldn't have to go into a restaurant and people ask you to oink, like be yeah. the most successful television type we didn't, of all time. We didn't network. give like, him, we probably did not give him enough props for yeah. the work in that scene. He was fantastic. Is, it was fantastic. Un- I can't. Mm. Be- I cannot imagine doing that. And every fucking breath was believable. Yeah, yeah. The lead 100%. up to it, every fucking yeah. thing they did. I also was there was incredible. It was that's, that's one if that more. was Philip Seymour Hoffman or James Gandolfini, it would mm. it would be the same performance. Like it was. It was yeah. brilliant. There was also one look from one of the other characters where, and I I literally looked at it and went, "Wow, that's the moment. That's the moment when you realize that everybody on the river is fucking nuts, including your mates." Include especially your yeah. mates. Well, look, yeah. what, what are you talking about? He's, he's just like, where was it? It was just a, a like after they've like killed the guy, and they're all talking about burying the body, and the one guy who was not into it, and he's just like looking at them, and he's realized that everybody in this fucking river is nuts, including his mates. Right now, that yeah, was yeah. and that was communicated clearly. Whether it wasn't necessarily true, they were trying to preserve their lives and the that sort of thing. But that's what the came across in my in that head performance that I can't get out of my head is it's like a medium single of john voight while it's happening oh and he's like damn. and it's not overplayed at all it's so subtle and he just kind of like leans yeah. against the tree and kind of kind of tries to look away but it's not overplayed at all and you know what he's hearing and see uh, yeah oh my god almighty yeah deliverance yeah. deliverance it's, it's not guys. oh my god guys it's right not as Urban graphic Cowboy. as they make out no. but it is as graphic as they make out yeah it's both probably more like, disturbing it's, because it's, it's not as graphic yeah yeah, that's exactly <laughs> right. right. But honorable because of how truthfully they did it. Yeah. Mm. What a movie. What a fucking what a drama. Wow. Dave, I got I to see you film something on a canoe someday. It's, it's got to happen. Okay. Man. John, the continuity. I mean, I, it was funny. I was, fucking, I was, if you have to use stunt doubles on the river, the continuity. Like, come on. Yeah. Like, I was, I was working. Stunts. I was working at a. Um, One take. Great. At least I know. A wakeboarding <laughs> challenge once with cameras in the boats. And like we were behind the, at the back and the other person that was working with me didn't realize that the bank of the river went f- like off and jumped out of the side of the boat holding the camera and sank five feet into the water. And so oh, she disappeared and all you saw was his arm sticking up out of the water holding a camera. <laughs> oh my God. Almost went in the water right down. So yeah, I've, I've had some experience with boats, but not a canoe. Uh, the elements. I cannot imagine. And they filmed this in uh, Georgia, it looked like. I was looking at the end credits. Um, All right. Man, on this fucking river. It sounds right. Pretty crazy. All right. It's been a pleasure, but it is definitely time wow. to move into a our teaser for next week. So before what you've been watching, Dave, you're going to set up the year we're going to do next year. The random year generator is going to play, and we're going to tell you 
the film at the very end of the episode. So let's do it. What is the year of our next film? Any guesses? We just did 67. 70s. You're on 60s. I'm going to go. I bet you. Okay. I'm, we're going recent again. 2016. 16. Here we go. Two. Jeff's close. Oh He's my close. God. Oh, he, One. Oh. oh my God. I was close last week, too. Oh. Jeff. 2018. Oh. I was a year off last week. 2018. Like I said, we're not going to sit here and Google wow. 2018 movies, but the end of the episode will tell you what we're going to talk about I next. Am week but we got to do what you've been watching dave you saw twisters you see anything else this week um i did watch uh the finale of the boys uh and we closed out the acolyte as well i'm very happy with how both of those went the boys is just like everybody out of the fucking pool um i haven't caught up on house of the dragon that's pretty much we we are working our way through season three of ted lasso um, right that's, nice. that's, so, you still yeah. like it you still like i it? do i do still like it yes um I'm, it turns I'm, for me I'm at digging. some point. I forget when, but maybe yeah. season four. It awesome. might it might be when when Nate pulls that move because that that kept me up at night. I had rage dreams. No, there's one it's episode three. where Jeff. I remember you complaining about three. You just I felt like there it was four... turning into something I thought there else. Were, are there four seasons? Hmm. Three, I but I think I, I remember. There's you only three total. Three. Mm-hmm. Are you sure? I yeah. Think so. Oh yeah. Yeah, we checked. <laughs> yeah, season three sucks. I watched the. Um... They try to give every single character in season three their own red. What did I get? You, Dave. Sorry, that's for me. They tried to give every single character their own retribution, and it was like, just do the show, just mm. just do do the show. Okay, John. I, get I watched. Drink, I, I forgot to mention this, but uh, a few weeks ago, I watched that Movie Pass documentary that's on Max right now. I don't know if you guys have Movie Pass have seen it. No, no. Yeah, we mentioned it earlier in the episode, the movie fest. Anyway, uh, quick crazy story, and I, I am kind of rooting for them to maybe find a way to come back. We're we're hardcore A listers with AMC, but I did love the idea of being able to go to multiple movie theaters, and their numbers yeah. were really impressive. We went when to they like people Sunshine back to Cinema and saw some local shit. We saw like Foxcatcher and stuff. It was great to support the local cinema. I think I think fucking Angelica sure. was on them. That was great. They was yeah. They were all on them, dude. All but the, at the same every time, single one of them. I'll never forget seeing Call Me by Your Name, and being like, this movie should not be worth the same as the Avengers. They shouldn't be billed the same price. This movie is beautiful. It was amazing. This should be seven dollars. Why? Why is this the same price as the Avengers? It makes no sense. Yeah, and unfortunately, AMC yeah. tried to take that to heart, and they were going to introduce tiered pricing for some of blockbusters. Guys, I ranted before we had the gripe. Every single episode, I grant, I griped about this. Anyway, what, what would else? suck is if the tiered pricing made the blockbusters more expensive, and the base price was what we're paying now. <laughs> that yeah, would right. Be fucking bullshit. <laughs> if you paid twenty six dollars. It's like to with the uh, whatever the the specialty seating that went away real fucking fast after they realized how successful that was not going to be. You make good points. Yeah. I also watched, um, this is really fun. We talked about Vertigo not too long on the show, a few mm. months ago, maybe. Um, and uh, there's a fun theater here. It's one of the Grauman theaters. It's not the Chinese. It's a little bit further east and across the street on Hollywood Boulevard called The Egyptian. And in 2018, uh, Netflix bought it. So, I was trying to remember what's the name of the Netflix theater that's by the Plaza Hotel, you know, the I little one. The yeah, Paris I can't, Cinema, I can't. It, the Paris. I, yeah, yeah. So that's the Netflix theater in New York. Yeah, still, they were playing right? the they were playing the um, Eddie Murphy one recently. The uh, yeah. So um, this is the Netflix theater Beverly here Scott movie, in town. Uh, it's their main one anyway, and it's a beautiful restoration. They brought it back and restored it to kind of what it used to be, except without the the next level balcony. Uh, so it was great. And they showed a Monday through Thursday is Netflix and Friday through Sunday, the American Cinematheque, uh, which is kind of like film forum curates yeah. there, but it's still a Netflix theater. Anyway, so we saw the first, uh, they were very proud of this, the first 70 mil print of Vertigo ever, because they had done a 4K wow. restoration on it before, which is probably what we all saw when we streamed it. Mm. But this was a 70 mil print. Um, Sometimes you saw it was beautiful. It was fun. It was really cool. Wow. Some of the oh my god! Anyway, it, yeah. it was great. It, that movie plays very well on a big screen. I'd only seen it on the small screen a few times, so wow. that was really fun. Uh, guys, I just want to mention this because we loved it so much when we talked about it. I think I'm gonna go back there on Monday to see Ed Wood. Oh, <laughs> they're showing a screening of that for wow. I don't know why. I'd like to no go back and see how much I can get through of this time. 
You hated it? I thought I, you liked I it. Hated I loved it. it. Yeah. Oh, I loved it. Like, I want to know. Is he Man's on? Tale. I'm all about Bella Lugosi, but I want to know if Martin Lando really deserves that Oscar over Samuel L. Jackson. And I'm not even that much of a nerd for the Oscars, but Pulp Fiction. What was Samuel L. up Pulp for? Pulp Fiction. It was the Pulp same Fiction. year. Yeah. And Martin Lando, Martin Lando, right? He won. And yeah. Samuel L. Jackson, if you look at the clip, was not happy about it. <laughs> <laughs> Know, oh, know, by the way, did anybody right. did anybody get a letter from Max this week, like an email? Not Fucking, that I know of. The same day they announced that they were firing another like couple of hundred employees, I got this letter from HBO saying your subscription is about to change. So now for the hundred and something bucks a year, I get 1080p instead of 4K. They do 4K for the same what? price. Oh, you have to yeah. pay more for it. These yeah. This is this is what they're Fire downgrading Festival my account to, to 1080p. This is what Fire Festival tried to do. They said, "Oh, by the way, you actually don't get your own room unless you pay for Fire Festival Max." It's like they fucking do this shit all yeah. the time. Guys, if you've been following, I know we're at the end of the show now, but have you been following anything about you know how Warner Discovery is probably going to have to sell some shit off. Of course, David Zaslav with Paramount is talking yeah. about... They're talking about know, splitting it down the middle. And how are these companies not able to emerge and acquire at a level to compete with these tech companies that have so much more influence over, you know, like these old FAA, F, F, hmm. FCC? FCC. Who would be... FCC restrictions. Why don't on, we, like, well, you know these? Well, well, are you com- kidding me? Yeah, Google sure, owns fucking. Like, there's sure, no, there's no comparison. I'm sure Congress can really come together to get a, a very well thought out bill in place. Well, the problem is the, you like, try to block well, AT and T and Comcast yeah. when fucking Apple owns its entire pipeline. Amazon owns its entire pipeline with bill. Like, there's no fucking comparison. It's ridiculous. That, Netflix that owns their entire pipeline now. They bought up a visual effects house. They, this needs to be changed immediately, or else there's yeah. not going to be fair competition. Anyway. Oligarchy 2024. Guys, I watch a John Benet Ramsey documentary uh, that is on Tubi <laughs> called An American Murder <laughs> Mystery. <laughs> and I also, um, we're in the process of moving, which is fucking awesome. So fuck you guys, and I'm having a great time. <laughs> and more movies coming next week. Let's go ahead and figure out what movie from 2018 we're going to be talking about next week. Can't wait. Let's listen to some Dasein for the next 10 seconds, people, and then we'll be back to you soon. And we're back. And we're back. We're back. We, friends, have decided to make a bold choice, and I think it's a fantastic choice. And Dave, you did. Mm-hmm. You were. You were the. You, you decided like this is the one that jumped out to you the most. So would you like to do the honors and announce it while I hold up this Carlos Barroso beer? Well, I was. Uh, I was going to go for Annihilation, but yeah, at point. the last minute, I did like. We looked up the spiel for Under the Silver Lake, and it has pegged it at the post. So Under the Silver Lake. Under the, Under, the Under the Silver Lake, Lake which Lake. is directed by John David Robert Mitchell, the guy who made It Follows. John, how many, many times were you before? Andrew Garfield's waiter? <laughs> At least two or three times. Not as often as Emma, but whenever he was there visiting her, I definitely. Is it true that you witnessed a Make a Wish with Andrew Garfield? No. <laughs> All right, people. Thank you so much. I can't wait to see you on the podcast <laughs> next week. Shit.